Hey, homie. Did you hear that? Yo, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to Prison Break Raw. I'm your host, the one and only J.D. Rutherford. Go ahead, give this channel a subscribe, share it, a like, a thumbs up, leave some messages or comments to try to read them as quickly as possible. And with that said, let's get into this very interesting topic, ghost stories from prison. Now, I know you've seen a lot of content out there regarding this subject. We've seen Ghost Hunters. I don't know if you're a fan of that show. I'm not really a fan of it. I think it's just pretty much a whole lot of Hollywood BS. But what is really going on inside of these prisons? Are they really haunted? Could they possibly be haunted? Is there really a such thing as ghosts? I mean, these are some questions that we're going to get into. And I'm going to bring you some of my own first-hand experience with some of these kind of things, these apparitions, as, as, as you can call them. Because I've been in some pretty old, decrepit, run-down prisons. And i got to tell you, a lot of these places that I've been to, there's been thousands and thousands of people been killed over the years of, since their construction. I mean, some of these prisons go back to the 1800s. And I would be even willing to bet that some of these camps that are out there could even possibly be haunted if ghosts are real. Because, I mean, any prison is not without violence. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a, a very low minimum, 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 minimum security. And there could still be some death going on there. I mean, there could be an accident. Somebody could die of a heart attack. You, you never know what's going to really happen in any of these places or anywhere in life. I mean, people die in hotels. People die in their homes. So, to understand, like, how these places could be haunted, all you would have to do is look at the body count in some of these places. I mean, especially like San Quentin or Folsom or Chino or, or a lot of other prisons in California where there's been a very high body count. And you got one spot in Folsom Prison that's called Blood Alley. And it wasn't called that for, for where they were just singing and dancing and holding hands in there. It was called that because people were doing some dancing, but they were doing some dancing with bone crushers and they were cutting people's heads off. So there's a lot of bodies out of Folsom. And there's a lot of bodies out of San Quentin and a lot of other prisons across the country. And we're going to talk about seven of those spots across the U.S. that are considered to be haunted. And we're going to talk about the place that's considered to be one of the most haunted places in America. We're going to explore that one as well. So sit back and stay tuned. Alright, so some of these ghost stories, man. We're going to get into the top seven that I was able to locate off the internet and various other research outlets that I went through. And we're going to go through them here together. We're going to start out with number one, the story of Willie Lloyd Turner. He was a death row inmate back in um, 1978. He robbed a jewelry store and killed the clerk. And he had like five reprieves before they finally executed him on May 25th, 1995. In the Greensville Correctional Center in Jarrett, Virginia. So this is a Virginia story for some of you out there in Virginia may not be familiar with this story. So Willie Lloyd Turner was very intelligent. He was probably one of the most intelligent men that was on that death row in Virginia at the time. He was actually he had a typewriter in his cell, and he was writing his his own autobiography of his life. He actually was able to complete about 600 pages of it until they finally executed him by lethal injection. When they went into his cell to gather up his stuff, here's the trip about his story. They found a 32 caliber revolver stuffed in his typewriter. I don't know how he got that pistol in there, but that's how smart this cat was. So he had a 32 caliber pistol in his cell, but the one thing that made Willie Turner so unique is that he believed in ghosts. He said he had actually experienced several different encounters with, with different apparitions while he was on death row. Now remember, death row is death row. So anybody that's on there is going to die at some point in time. And if they're dying right there on the prison grounds, what's to say that, that they aren't haunting those halls or those cell blocks? But Willie Turner believed that. And what Willie Turner did is he went out and made a statement as to go so far as to say that he will come back to haunt the prison. He was going to find a way to come back, and he was going to come back and haunt the prison. And lo and behold, there were people that were on that cell block that said that they had actually seen Willie Turner after he was executed. So I guess maybe he figured out a way to come back after all, and, and he got there, and he's haunting that uh, Greensville 
Correctional Center death row to this very day. So if you ever get a chance to land on death row in Virginia, I'm not saying to go out and do something to get there, but you might be able to have a full-on conversation with uh, Willie Turner if he's figured out how to communicate with you as much as he's figured out how to come back. So the second story we got is the hangman of San Quentin. Now there was this guy, his name was Amos Lunt. He was the hangman of San Quentin back in the 1800s. And, and he got so stressed out. He was a correctional officer there too. He got so stressed out that he believed that he was being haunted by 21 of what he would call these bloody wretches were constantly bothering him and harassing him every single day. Talking about putting a noose around his neck, trying to hang him. This dude wouldn't even light up his own room. Wouldn't eat for days and he once stayed up for 12 days fighting it back. Now in San Quentin, one thing that I know for sure is that they still below this prison in a certain level in, in, inside of the, um, the, on the grounds itself, they still have the gallows down there with a few cells that are along the lines looking out towards the gallows. And there's been a lot of stories. I've heard it from, from, from porters that have been down there to clean up that area, from various correctional officers say that place is haunted hell. I could tell you from experience that San Quentin has a very dark, scary, uncanny chill that goes through it. And that right there is from experience. I've seen shadows walking around in there up on the tiers. You got to remember how many people have died there. So if, if any spot is haunted, then it's damn sure San Quentin. Infamous Alcatraz Federal Prison. Alcatraz basically has, I mean... It has a whole smorgasbord of ghost stories that we could choose from. But the one that I chose from that I thought was quite interesting was the story of Al Capone's ghost. Now, the funny thing about Al Capone's ghost haunting Alcatraz is that he didn't die on Alcatraz. But there are people that remember when Al Capone was there. Al Capone was um, too scared to go to the yard because he thought he was going to be killed. So a lot of times he was able to talk the guards into allowing him to stay in the showers where what he did is he learned how to play the banjo. And I guess he got pretty good at it. So in these showers, there has been accounts of people saying that they hear banjo music coming from the shower. Whether it's Al Capone playing the banjo or it's somebody else playing the banjo or who knows. Maybe some ghost that died in San Quentin a long ass time ago was watching Al Capone play the guitar and just like Willie Turner... He figured out how to learn how to play the banjo from beyond the grave. Ghost from the Ohio State Reformatory. Now they had a big ass riot in this place. This was a long time ago. Now this place has housed over 150,000 people since it was first opened in 1896. And one notably is there was a riot that happened. This place was closed in 1990. I mean for good reason. I mean this place is like hella decrepit. So... In the 1930s, they had a, a riot that resulted in 120 people being forced into sharing 12 of the 20 solitary confinement cells. Now think about solitary confinement back in those days. These cells were tiny, little, man. Sometimes they didn't even have a toilet or a bed in them. So you break down 12 of these solitary confinement cells and you shove a you you equal amount to 10 people, 10 people a cell, you got 10 people in each of these one-man solitary confinement cells until 120. Now, that's got to be crazy. There had to have been some people dying in there, people getting stepped on, people just murdering people from sitting there in the dark, whatnot. But the Ohio State Reformatory is considered to be a hot spot for, for ghost activity in that place. Now we're moving on to the next one, the Old Charleston Jail. Now, the old Charleston jail was basically a 211-year-old standing structure of corrections. This place saw as many deaths as up to 10,000 people, and that wasn't just due to execution. That was from injury and sickness as well, man. This place was a real shithole, and, and there was a lot going on in there. So when it was built in 1802, the jail functioned until 1939. So, damn, man, that place was open for a long time. And it was only meant to house about 130 people, but it saw as you know, many as 300 at any given time. So when visitors were coming into this place, they would hear 
doors slamming, various different noises, objects would be moving, they could hear voices off to the distance in empty rooms, human-like shadows, all that. I mean, this place, basically, if, if there was a haunted prison, this place is one of them. Another um, interesting fact about the old Charleston jail is that the first female ser serial killer, the no own, first known serial killer, Lavinia Fisher, was actually housed in this jail. So who knows, maybe Lavinia is walking around in there somewhere scaring the shit out of people. But it's considered to be a hot spot for a paranormal activity as well. Next we go on to the Wyoming Territorial Prison in Laramie, Wyoming. This one right here has got a whole huge history around it. There's been people like, like Butch Cassidy has been in this jail. And it's had a lot of people. It was a west, out west territorial prison. So when the expansion was going out west and all the money that was being exchanged, there was a lot of stagecoach robberies, train robberies, bank robberies, everything going on. This was the wild, wild west. So imagine what kind of cats were actually in this prison right here. And one of the ones that was actually in this prison that was a notable killer of his wife was a man named Julius Greenwald, and he was sent there in 1897. And there are some uh, accounts that, that some people say that they've seen Julius's ghost walking around in this place. Man, it was a cigar maker. He killed his wife, died there in that prison, and, and said to still be haunting it to this day. The most scariest place or haunted place in America is the Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. Now this place was first opened in 1829 and it's finally was closed in, in 1971. It's now a historical landmark and they got tours that go through this place. But this spot is, is considered to be so haunted that there's been accounts on, on cell block two of a shadowy figure that's been that's been reported in, in, in cell block six and there's actually a cell that is so cold to go into and so gives you such the chills and, and such a bad vibe to even go in there that most people won't even go around it. But if you go on tours and you got people that go in there, I'm pretty sure somebody wants to get up in there and get that feel. Now, these are the ones that are out there. But I'm also going to share with you some ones that, that I've experienced myself that I can't explain at all. And that some other people have actually experienced, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people, man. I've done a lot of prison time. And I've talked to a lot of different people that have been in various different places all over the country. Federal prisons, state prisons, county jails. Um, I remember a long, long time ago, I was just a kid. And I was in, in the James A. Music Facility. It was a, a farm, they call it, in Orange County. And they had these tents. It was on the uh, North Compound, or um, I don't know what it was called, North Facility, North Compound, but they just, it was, it was north, north Side, and they had West, and they had East, and then they had the one where the women were at. So in this one right here, it was all tents, and I was in what was called the Pumpkin Patch, and they called the Pumpkin Patch because we were work refusals. We refused to work, so they made us wear an orange jumpsuit while everybody else wore blues. Well... In the next tent over, they stomped this kid out, cracked his head open, and killed him. Afterwards, there was people that were like, I remember it was in the middle of the night, we heard like a huge commotion. And all these people came running out. And they went running out on, the, it was in the middle of the night. So the deputies are, are going crazy, like, get the fuck back in there, and get in there, and yelling over the PA. Until they finally came out, and they're like, what the hell's going on? And what people said they seen was this kid that died in there. He was sitting in there in the bathroom and he was crying. And his head was all split open and everything. It was like four people said that they went in there and seen it. Now, I don't know if they were on LSD or if they'd been all night tweaking on that methamphetamine or what. But, you know, there was more than one person that said they seen this. I didn't personally see it, but I heard it afterwards. And every time you walk past this tent, you always got that weird vibe, man, that something wasn't right going on inside of there. So there may be more to the story. I would urge uh, ghost hunters to maybe go in there and check that out. So, San Quentin though. Now, I've heard like noises in the walls because you got these old vents in there. 
And, and I've heard a lot of strange noises in the middle of the night. We're talking everybody's asleep. You can hear people snoring up and down the tier. You can hear people wrestling in their bunks or whatnot, like moving around, rolling over. But you can't really hear anybody talking. But there was every now and then you could hear voices coming from these vents. And it was weird, man. I mean, they were like really inaudible where you couldn't really hear what they were saying. You just knew you can hear them. And, and this shit used to trip me out, man. And sometimes I'd be like, what the fuck is that? You know, I asked my celly one time, man, you hearing that? And he would hear it too. He's like, man, I thought I was the only one that heard that. Nah, man, I heard that shit too. And it, and it, and it sounds crazy because it's just so, ugh, you know. Another one was when I was at Chino on, in Sycamore Hall. I remember it was it was the middle of the night. Everything was dark. There was only like faint lights out there on, on, the, on the catwalk or the freeway, as you call it. <clears throat> and uh, my, my neighbor over for me, you know, taps on the wall real lightly because we ain't supposed to talk to the doors once they do that shutdown. And he's like, he's like, hey, homie, hey, who's that sitting on the stairs? And I look over and there's a dude sitting on the stairs that are at the end of this tier. You know, you get your little mirror and you look up and you see him right there. And you're just like, I don't know, homie, uh, are, they, are, they, are they tossing the unit? He's like, he's like, yeah, maybe. Should, should we shoot, you know, shoot word down to the homie that they might be, they might be in the pad tearing up cells? And I said, nah, man, just, just, just stay on your toes. Just stay awake and stay on your toes and wait. The thing about this was, is we never heard the doors open. When you hear that door open, it's like, I mean, it opens and it's loud. I mean, it's like clack, clack, and the door opens and you know they're on the tier. So we didn't hear that shit, but we seen this person sitting on the stairs down at the end and it didn't look like they were doing anything at all other than just sitting there. So after a while, you know, I'm getting ready. Me and my celly are up. My celly looks down there. He sees them too. And, and we're just like chilling waiting for the for the COs to come down and rack our, our, our doors and, and toss our cells. So we got everything hooped. We're, we got everything ready to go. Nothing ever happened. About an hour goes by. We look out again. This dude's gone. He wasn't even there to begin with. So whoever that was, who knows, man, could be anybody. I mean, on Palm Hall, where I was at, that's where the infamous Cheyenne was killed. And there are, there have been accounts of some people saying that they've seen Cheyenne in there. Now, I don't know if that's just folklore or that's just an old wives tale or legend. But when I was on Palm Hall, you could, it, you just had that feel like something wasn't right. At any given moment, you would, you would get a chill or sometimes like a cold would just roll through there. And you would smell various different smells coming out of the vents or coming off that freeway that you really couldn't explain. Is it haunted? If there is a place haunted, Chino's one of them. There's been a lot of death there. A lot of death in San Quentin. Folsom, I've heard countless stories about Folsom. I've heard of people saying that they've seen somebody holding onto their throat, blood pouring out of the side of their neck, gasping and choking and coughing in the corner of their cell that it freaked them out so bad that they jumped up on the bars like a cat. On a screen door trying to get out of that cell and couldn't get out turned around the guy was gone um there's all the time i don't know how many times like this one happened to me when i was at tracy and tracy they're just a solid door they ain't bars and and they got a little window and there's been times where i've seen a shadow walk past the door and just for being bored or being up in the middle of the night got an insomnia or whatever you want to look down that tier as far as you can to see if it's the CO walking around looking for somebody or getting coming at somebody's door just doing their count. But no sooner did that happen that I saw the CO walk by right after that. He looked right at me at his flashlight, put his flashlight down and kept going. So I'm, I'm still looking down this tier waiting to see this other person or, or shape roll around the side of the rail and never did. So I, it's something I can't really explain, but I remember feeling it. It was, it was, it was creepy. I told my celly about it. He thought I was crazy. So ghost stories in prison, you hear them all the time. Rarely do you hear them from, from people that were actually there. They're usually some kind of Hollywood ghost hunter stories or, or paranormal uh, investigators going in there. 
But the one thing that they always say is, man, there's a lot of real negative energy going on in here. And that's prison life, negative energy at its finest hour. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, you know, give it a like, a thumbs up, um, leave some messages or comments. If you have any ghost stories of your own, any things you'd like to talk about on here, let me know. I'll come out and do a part two. We'll bring in some more uh, information on this. We may even go so far as to talk about haunted prisons abroad and maybe some of these haunted concentration camps that I heard that are just, ooh, give you the chills to think about it. So stay tuned for more content.